front cover of the stylus seemed to be glorifying the relationship and the murder. While friends and family say goodbye to a College of Brockport freshman who police say was murdered, students on campus are up in arms over the way the latest issue of the school's newspaper covers that story. Good evening. Rich and Leah have the night off. Good to be with you. I'm Don Hudson. Alexander Kogut was laid to rest this afternoon in her hometown of New Hartford. Police say that she was murdered in her dorm room last Saturday morning. Her boyfriend, Clayton Whittemore, has been charged with second-degree murder. Today, though, hundreds of people, including Kogut's friends and fellow students from Brockport, turned out to say their final goodbyes to the 18-year-old. Lynette Adams has been speaking with students on the Brockport campus after hundreds of newspapers covering the story were actually stolen. And new at 11, we have more on that story and reaction to it, Lynette. Well, Don, it has been a difficult week on the Brockport campus. Students are still trying to cope with Kogut's death, and there are still so many questions. The student-run newspaper hoped to answer some of those questions in its latest edition, but some students say the coverage does more harm than good. I'm especially a little bit annoyed with the Facebook statuses. This is the newspaper that is the talk of the campus. This edition of The Stylus is dedicated to freshman Alex Kogut, but some students are upset by it. I know what they say is some of the things that you post on the internet are out there for everybody to see, but I don't think it was right to steal them directly off of the web page to use on the stylus. And to plaster her face all over it was uh, perhaps equally inappropriate and sensationalized. Senior Casey Spark is among a number of students who say it's too soon for this. On the day Kogut is buried, the front page is filled with pictures of her and the man accused of killing her. It shows not only pictures of Kogut and Clayton Whittemore, but reproductions of their Facebook pages. Several hundred copies of the newspaper are believed to have been stolen yesterday by angry students and thrown in the trash. I think we should remember her in a better way instead of showing her information like that. The paper covers the investigation, domestic violence, and there's a story about Kogut and her accomplishments. We pulled these photos, we took screenshots, and we, looking through them, felt that it told a story, and the story needed to be told. Cassie Negley is the editor-in-chief. She's heard the criticism, but she says she stands by her newspaper. Someone came up to me yesterday and said that she saw this front page and she realized what could happen when you're in an abusive relationship. And she said that cemented the idea in her head that she needed to get out of hers. So that story alone just, it kind of backs up why we did this, even though that wasn't our intention. The stylist distributes 3,500 copies on campus and in the surrounding area. There's so much talk about the newspaper coverage of Kogut's death. While we were in the student union waiting for our interview, an alumni came by to get a copy of the paper. He'd heard students talking about it in a local restaurant and wanted to see what it was all about. So this crime has certainly had an impact on the university and the community around it. Yeah, one can only imagine a whole school. Now, I didn't write for the college newspaper back in the day, but I wrote for my high school newspaper. In fact, was standing over us. So what is it like at school? Is faculty not watching us? Or? Well, it's a student-run newspaper in every sense of the word, so the students are free to write what they choose. Yeah, uh, apparently that's the direction they went. Lynette Adams, thank you very much. Moving on, and new 